Man, y'all know the count with us, bro. It's Ace One K and his ink. I'm here with my boy Jeff in the way of it. Oh, four, we ready to get crazy on this thing. I woke up early in the morning. The alarm is stressed. My arms, I got cleaned up and grabbed my keys and I jumped right up in my car. Got a call from my big homie. He said his money to be it's made the today. Trying to touch a million. It just feel like I'm a play away. What up, world? It's your boy Jeff, aka Cool Boy Jeff, right here. This is the only place you can find the wave is the wave 804. So I'm back again, you know what I'm saying? Starting off January 2023, right? You know what I'm saying? With the interview, you feel me? So look, man, I'm gonna go ahead and give a big shout out to my guy, man, Ace. You know what I'm saying? Having me in this joint, you know, doing this interview, first, first official interview. But enough about myself, I'm gonna go ahead and let my dog go ahead and introduce himself. Right, I'm Ace1K, you feel me? That's all I really got to say. I don't really got. I say about myself. Nah, right, man, you gonna be talking a whole lot in this interview, man. Right. So you got a lot to say. Right, we gonna get into it. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna go ahead and start you off with the first one, man. So, with when it comes to your music, what is your earliest memory of rap music? Bro, from my pops, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He be riding around the car, blasting music, you know, just listening to the jink. That's probably my earliest memory, mm -hmm. just getting into rap music, just listening to it. Mm -hmm. Was there anybody specifically that you was listening to that he was listening to? He used to listen to it. So my pops used to do music too, so uh -huh. kind of inherited it. Uh -huh. So listen to him. I'm like, oh yeah, I could do that too. I mean, right. Everybody always look up to their pops. I mean. mm -hmm. Well, how old was you when you first like kicked your first rhyme or you started like wanting to take it seriously? I was in middle school, for real, for real. I was in eighth grade, and um, people was rapping in the um, locker pot. I mean, and I was like, oh, they freestyling? Oh, I, I want to do it, but I didn't know how to freestyle. I mine used to rap, for real. Uh -huh. But once I realized I can mix and match my words and make it sound good, I, mean, I was like, well, I got this on lock. I just got to perfect it. Hey. For sure. All right, man. I see you. I see you. All right. So, well... You already did explain about your pops, you know what I'm saying, playing rap music and, because he was an artist. And I think he is still doing making music at this time, yeah. too. But he's not? He just be hopping on stuff. He be time hopping time. on stuff. All right, cool. We're going to talk about I that later on the interview. Time. Yeah, I, I got, you, got you later on the interview. But um, when did you first record your song? Or what was the song that you wanted to rap over to see how good you was at that time? The first song... For real, for real, the first song I ever did, I did it on Band Lab, and it was a remix to the City Girls Act Up Jank, because everybody was doing their little freestyle to it, posting it, so you feel me? I decided I was going to do that, so I ain't gonna lie to you. But my first song, song recording, it's called um, Proud, mm -hmm. and I had, I just wanted my people to be proud of me, because I always felt like, you feel me, I want enough. Mm -hmm. So it's like, when I load it out, and I can turn into music, that's how I get it out. Okay. So that's how that came about. All right. Now, with your name, how did you come up with that? Somebody else gave me my name. Um, his name, Malachi. Uh-huh. We was in a little rap group called NGT, New Generation Takeover. Okay. Um, Next Generation Takeover, my fault. Okay. And we were standing in the room. He said, we need names. I was like, shoot, I don't know bro. I said, my name is Anthony. You feel me? He was <laughs> like, he said... I'm gonna be priest. The other dude, he was like, You're gonna be ghost. And he said, You ace. So I was like, Okay, ace. I said, That's hard. So mm -hmm. I went to go change my Instagram. Ace. Ace took, ace was taken. I seen everybody put 1K at the age and get the end. So I thought it was a cool train for me. Mm -hmm. I put it, it was taken. Mm -hmm. So I just added another A for me. That's mm -hmm. how I got ace 1K. Okay. Hey, man. There ain't nothing really special behind the story. Well, it sound like it, man, because I never would have thought of that, man. Like, so. Basically, that group we were just discussing about. How old was you when you first got into that group? How old? Yeah. I was, um, eighth grade was, so like 14, 15. Mm hmm. Probably around that age. Okay. So everybody was like knowing who y'all was. Like, what songs was trending around that time that had people gravitate to y'all as a group? Oh, we ain't never dropped no song as a group. We was just like some. People that ran together, we just called ourselves that. Oh, okay. So on, like, we ain't never put nothing out. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. I ain't never. We gonna get into that. I ain't never really get into music for real till last year. Until so, last year? Yeah, like I used to just make stuff for me just to make it, but didn't want never nothing on no serious time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Well, 
My biggest question is, what is something that is the most difficult of being an artist? Like, you know what I'm saying? I know it's a lot of stuff that you got to be able to come up with and put in songs, but to to my knowledge, just, well, to your knowledge, what would that be? The most difficult thing about being an artist for me, it's not even about, like, the music, because the music is cool. I know how to make music. It's just getting the people to listen to you, getting people to understand you, you feel me? They they go with who popular. Mm-hmm. They go with who popping. They not going with what's real. But that's what I feel like, you feel me? But, because I know I be saying some real stuff, but they're going to listen eventually. They're going to trust me. Okay. And then you, you speak of, like, you know, you speaking of real, your definition, like, what is real? Because everybody have their own like, way of thinking. I don't necessarily make music for people to, like, like, oh, yeah, this ain't hard, but, like, oh, not to. I can make a turn song, but, like, I'd rather make something people can relate to, mm-hmm. you feel me? Because regardless, everybody going through something, you feel me? Mm-hmm. You could be the voice to help them get through that, you feel mm-hmm. me? So that's how my gym Do you ever get any feedback from people who listen to your music? That All the time. You know? All the time. Mm-hmm. I just posted, this one girl told me, she said, she said, none of your songs are bad. She said, you probably get somewhere more people support you. Hey, that come with time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just hopped in it. I'm just going to be humble and wait my turn. Hey, man, shit, man. Your turn is here. You doing it. I mean, it's, it's nothing too much, but hey, man, you putting in that work. So as far as that, you did say earlier that you just started doing, well, taking music seriously last year. What was something that came about that you wanted to take it full throttle? Um, I lost both my aunties last year. Mm-hmm. So... And I didn't get to make it, and I wanted neither one of the funerals. And mm. it was like, dang, they never gonna get to see me shine for real. So I was like, I'm still gonna do it anyway for them. I really started taking it serious then, because I was like, everybody job. I said, I want at least when somebody else for to go, I want them to go knowing that I was doing something positive with my life. I don't want them going knowing the old version of me, you feel mm-hmm. me? Because that's how I felt when they were like, I was like, well, they never got to see me do great. Mm. So, Okay. Was there ever like a dedication song like towards yeah. your aunties? I didn't even mention them in a few songs. I ain't made like a, just a dedication one like for them. Mm-hmm. But I mentioned them in a few songs like the album I dropped, Going Ghost. Mm-hmm. Um, I made a whole little segment for my auntie on one of the songs. Mm-hmm. Songs I just made yesterday. I just talked about the whole family. It's called Family Tree. Mm-hmm. That's ain't gonna be on the next album called Life to, Life of a Menace. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you know you always. One thing I noticed, man, um, you know, when I first met your pops, you know, he was speaking big on family, and I'm seeing that you also speak big on family as well. Why, why is that so important to you as far as, like, family to yourself? Because I feel like family the only thing you got for real, and sometimes not even that, because family change too. Mm-hmm. But it's like, family, to me, family is just like, like, I look at them as family. We're not even related. Mm-hmm. But they family, like, they been since they one ain't never switched on. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I call family. Everybody always stay on honey. I mean, I ain't never got a question of loyalty. So that's how I look at family. Right. I don't want to, I don't want to be around some people that's, I got to, what they doing? Like, you feel me? Like, right. what you want, bro? Like, you feel me? I don't want to have to be doing all that. You feel me? I'd rather be comfortable with who I'm around. Mm-hmm. And I look at them as family. So, okay. that's how, that's how. All right. I mean, you definitely got to hold a standard um, to your family. I mean, as well, it's like you trying to get somewhere and, um, you know, they're trying to support you as much as they can. But do you ever get caught up when it comes to that? I mean, of course, you're speaking on family, but, you know, people also do question support from those who say, you know, I thought you listened to my music or this and this and that. How do you go about that as an artist? Hey, I don't worry about that, bro. If you're going to listen, you're going to listen. If you're not, you're not. That's how I look at it. But at the same time, if you're going to listen to it, listen to it with a purpose. Because mm-hmm. I'm recording it with a purpose. Like, mm-hmm. don't just listen to it because it sounds good. Like, I want you to listen to my words. Mm-hmm. All right, man. You, man. you got your head on your shoulders, too. So what is the most famous song off of one of your, one of your albums, man? Like, what is the most one that is getting a lot of play and people hitting you up? Like, yo, man, this joint right here is going crazy. What would that be? The one that's ever got the biggest praise was a song I made called On The Rise. Mm-hmm. Because I was on, feel me, I was on the rise. Feel me? I felt like I was on the rise. Feel me? I was just making songs. Like, I got in my bag. I was in the studio every weekend, every every other day almost, for real, for real. Mm-hmm. I used to leave school just to go to the studio, man. Mm-hmm. Middle of the day, like, 
But y'all trying to go to the stool? We at the stool, bro. You feel mm. me? I'm on the grind. You feel me? Mm. Yeah, man. You steady on the grind, man. So, what's... um? Do you ever get, uh, you know, asked to do collaborations with other artists that's around? You know what I'm saying? If so, what are those artists that you can be able to name them? Um, I ain't going to name them, but mm-hmm. it's some of them because I turn them down. Mm. Because people be thinking stuff is for free. And I don't, mm. like them, and my brothers, but that's, mm. that's law. Mm-hmm. But ain't nothing free in this world, man. Right, that's right. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Right. And um, I'm glad you brought that up, too, because I know that um, I've been seeing on a couple um, pages on social media. Um, shout out to RVA News Culture. Um, I've seen that, that, you know, the one thing that's killing the 804 area or just Virginia, period, is just that, you know, certain people think that things are for free and they can't pay their way. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying, things don't definitely grow if you don't have no type of uh, uh, money coming in. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. As that, do you think that's the main thing that's killing the rap scene when it comes to Virginia? I feel like what's killing the rap scene in Virginia is just the hating. Mm. You feel me? It's the everybody want to be better than the next person. I want to come up together. Mm. I feel like we came together, you feel me? We'd be mm. unstoppable by facts. Mm-hmm. The sound is raw. The sound is crazy from from the well to the berg to the to the R. Mm. Nigga, to Newport News, to Norfolk, by air, it's raw, but I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. They sleep on us, but trust me, we coming. Mm-hmm. We got some kind of facts. All right, All right. And, 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 and with that, what is something that you think that is being mostly overlooked in this area due to music? Because there's some hard artists out there. Ask yourself, but what would something be like that that's, that's kind of like, you know, causing a little issue? The violence, I say that, right? Cause they they look at they look at us to be like, like nah, you feel me? They always rapping about that. They always rapping about that. Ain't nothing positive going on. It's like you don't see too much people, like you don't see nobody doing no charities. You don't see nobody doing no like events helping the youth. You don't see none of that. You just see everybody on the news, everybody on Murder Inc, everybody under the under say cheese or something, you feel me? But mm-hmm. nobody want to help each other. That's mm-hmm. the problem. Mm-hmm. Nobody want to come together. That's that's really the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I, I can definitely see it. Um, based on me having a social media platform, and again, I mean, I'll do this jump for free if I had to. But of course, like, you know, to build something, you definitely have to have the uh, proceeds to build with it, you know, ain't, ain't ain't nothing for free. And also, with coming with it, we we all know what's going on. So it shouldn't be no issue why that we can't be able to support each other, whether it's free or financially. So I understand it either. But let's get into it, man. So you have your guys right here with you as well. Uh, fellas, if you can, you can go ahead and introduce yourself too, man. Spazzo. Yeah, hey, what? That's all y'all got to say about man, it. Man, yeah. shout out to y'all fellas, man. Um, just like a couple <laughs> questions for you, um, for you guys. Um, either one, you know, saying go ahead and answer. When it comes to supporting your guy, man, what is the main thing that you have to kind of think of when it comes to um, building something? Now, I know that when things start to be slow, you know, it takes its time. But when it takes off, you know, what I'm saying you start to see see different things change. How were you guys able to stay disciplined as being supporters to them? Promotion. Everything is promotion. Mm-hmm. Everything is just promoting, marketing. We done put up so many posts for Ace and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopping on songs, taking pics, going live, behind the scenes, everything. Mm-hmm. Right. All of that is just supporting them. That's just going to make them grow up even more. Right. Right. Hey, man, that's, um, that's a real good answer. Now, also, too, when, you know, when you guys go out, you know what I'm saying, and, you know what I'm saying, things happen, you know what I'm saying, especially how the way that we come up, you know. Mm-hmm. How were you able to keep them, like, maintained and also focused? Because, you know, certain things do happen, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you, 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 you oh, 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 because oh, I, already, I already know how it's going to go. Well, I'm saying, but it's just like, hey, bro, you know, I, I know you want to do this, but, bro, let's do this. How often or how how often do y'all try to keep him in that type of situation? Keep it a whole band. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for us, he would have been in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, like he would have been crashed out. This stuff do happen though. Yeah. 
try to find something that gives them anything. Let's go hoop or something. Yeah, know? something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Nah, man, I man, y'all appreciate y'all boys for sure. Nah, nah, man, it's, I mean, y'all some real ones, because especially in this day and age, man, good people, it's hard to come by, and especially as friends, because, you know, I don't know, everybody has their own interior mode, and people wake up with different feelings every day, so you just never know. Now, when it comes to um, the, the music, you know what I'm saying, I know most of the time artists have, you know, writer's block when they kind of get stuck in something like that. You know, how is it like when in the studio when you guys come up with ideas and stuff like that? I ain't gonna lie, like, I mean, I'll, he he always got a freestyle, but yeah. you feel me? He's always yeah. freestyling. Mm-hmm. If he don't freestyle, he gonna have it written down before he comes into the studio. You feel me? Everything's always in motion when it comes to music. Yeah. You feel me? And right. you never have no writer's block at all. Mm-hmm. It's always a song every day. I get sent a song every day. So I don't see him having no writer's block. Mm hmm. All right, cool. All right. So what? So what is the the remedy when y'all in the studio, man, to get y'all mentally prepared? Or, you know, what I'm saying Ace getting you know mentally prepared, man. Y'all ain't gotta go too much in the detail, but I ain't gonna lie, I gotta roll me a foul and five. Yeah, I, ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you, but I got to, cause it's like when I record, like I gotta feel it myself, bro. Like you know, when I when I when I smoke, I mean, I just. I feel it, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Like they say, I be freestyling. I come off the top every song. Every song. I don't, like, after, like, I say 10th, 11th grade, I stop writing. All I do, I go bar for bar every song until the song finish, and I be like, let me hear that jink through. Mm-hmm. Play it one time, I right, just go to the next thing. You feel me? I don't waste time. I know it's hard. You feel me? Because I'm speaking some real shit. It ain't me just talking about some random shit. Bro. I'm actually rapping, bro. Mm-hmm. They gon' They gonna feel me, bro. Hey, man. Definitely, man, appreciate you guys again, man, for um, being there and support us, real ones, and um, just staying true. Now, the only thing is, it's going to see what time will tell. And then I know I'm going to see our guys at the top. Everybody got to put their own work in, so we will see you dudes do it. Now, back to you, Ace. Now, what is the certain things that you have going on outside of music, you know what I'm saying? Or is this music just your full-time avenue for right now? Right now, this my grind, but this my, this the only thing I want to do. Like, it's not even like I want to do it. Like, I'm going to do this thing, but this my, this my goal. And I know I can reach it because I know I'm hard. Bro. Like, you feel me? I know I'm going to get there, bro. Mm-hmm. That's just, that's what I'm focused on right now, this music. Just trying to make it out, trying to come up. Mm-hmm. Now, how <laughs> many, um, you do mixtapes as well as just albums? I do straight albums. Do straight albums. Okay. Yeah. Now, how many albums do you try to push out within a year, or do you have some type of system that you got coming up? Oh, I think I think I got it. You feel me? I think I need to come up with a system because last year I put out four albums. Mm-hmm. Like, and it wasn't even on purpose. It was just I was making stuff. Like, I'm about to drop it. Like, I don't, I ain't, I don't got the structure for to be, like, I need management and all that, but we're not getting into all that, but, like, I just be putting stuff out there, putting stuff out there, mm-hmm. but I don't promote it. That's the problem. Like I'll put it up there, I put it on all the platforms, but then I will take it off my page if mm-hmm. I'm about to go drop something else, mm-hmm. cause I want them to pay attention when I'm about to drop. Not this, cause that's old. I don't be like I don't go back and listen to all of them. Mm-hmm. Like I probably the first song I drop, I probably don't even remember half the songs on them things. But I, that's how many songs I, I got. Like 500 songs in the vault mm-hmm. right now. Right now. No cap. Yes, I'm I'm three albums ready to drop right now. Facts. Word? Facts. Real talk. <laughs> I swear to God, I, I do that every... I make five songs a day. You got 300 songs on the vault. No, like 500. 500. Yes. If yeah. not 500, 490. Facts. 490. I'm telling you, it's up there. It's really up there. I make five songs a day for the past three months. So what would, in your own tone, what would... What would describe your personal work ethic? Flawless. Mm. Flawless. I'm telling you. Top tier. Top tier. I'm telling you. I just, my problem is, like, I'm stingy with my bread, bro. So it's like, I don't be wanting to record with people because, like, I know how I want me to sound. And if that's not how I'm sounding, I'm not going to put that out there. Mm-hmm. So the songs I've been making on the Band Lab app, mm-hmm. It's raw. It's unique because I made it. I can make my drink sound how I want it to sound. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to put that out there. I'm going to wait until 
I didn't find the right producer. Shout out to um Aiden and Blow, Blow. Wicked mm. Blow, back. Mm. Telling you, that dude, they some ghosts, bro. They the producers, they coming up. Y'all got to tap in with them. Real talk. Tap in, man. Real talk. So now, you. So now it sounds like you have the whole formula going on. You got the right partners around you. You got the right mindset. Now, how important is it to have a team that's around you, big dog? It's important because they can focus. You feel me? Like they don't. Like they don't want to see me crashing out. They don't want to see me like. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Keep my head on straight facts. Mm-hmm. Cause I'll be wild. And I ain't gonna lie to you. Mm-hmm. I'll be on some crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. They keep me focused. They keep me in heat. That's what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. They don't want me getting off track, doing the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. All right. Now, when it now, so what is something are you looking? Well, this is the question. When you first, well, you still doing your thing. What are some things are you now learning or figuring out that you didn't really understand when you first entered this music game? That. Ain't nobody gonna listen to you just cause you put it out there. Like you gotta, you gotta promote. Like just for them to listen, you have to promote, bro. Cause once they start seeing you, oh, they posting them too. They posting them too. They posting. Them. Oh, let me go see what he talking about. You feel mm-hmm. me? You gotta promote yourself, man. Right? That's that's all it is to it. But yeah, market. That's the word I was yeah, looking for. Yeah, that's good. See, shit like this, bro. You be helping me out. Bro. I right. with that much, man. And marketing. Okay. Okay. Now. As far as the music that you put out, do you do you kind of most express uh do you mostly talk about like pain or just uh, street music or nah, anything else no. like that? Because I don't want to like I don't want to walk into the industry being viewed as oh that nigga I had or that nigga we can't do nothing with him. Uh-huh. You, you feel me? I I rap about pain because I go through a lot of shit. I promise you, I go through so much shit. But everybody go through shit. So mm-hmm. it's not like look for no pity or no sympathy for nobody. But mm-hmm. everybody go through shit. I rap about pain. I rap about shit people can relate to. And I don't get it. So I can't, feel me, fuck up with B for the one time, feel me? Like, when I be doing songs with them, that's the only time you hear me rapping about some other stuff. But when it's my jinx, I'm telling you, I'm rapping about experiences, pain, situations, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Real talk. No... I ain't just rapping about bread, bitches, and cars and shoes, nigga. I'm rapping about some real shit, man. Mm-hmm. Give uh, give everybody something to listen to. Yeah, man. And it's a variety. Like I can't. I'm versatile as bitch. Bro. I can make a love song, pain song, a hate you song, you feel me? Right. Street song. Right. I can do it all. But I'm telling you, I didn't master my craft. I took a year off to do that thing. I'm ready, bro. Okay. Now, um. And you said something about beef, right? Now, when it comes to uh, beef, the only person that comes to mind is uh, 50 Cent, how the way he orchestrates and promotes himself within it. Now, the way that you go about it, and also, of course, you was talking about violence earlier, uh, how do you try to keep it mostly on wax and try to build music versus... Uh, having stuff happen outside of music. Now, I know it's things that you can't really talk about, but if you can at least give somewhat of an answer towards towards the question. I try to keep that show all social media, but at the same time, I got a big mouth, man. Like, and I don't like to hold my tongue. I don't like to bite my tongue. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you feel me? I try not, because like I said, I don't want to be viewed as such. I'm trying to mm-hmm. view differently. I'm trying to better my image. So when it comes to that, I don't really let it touch the internet for real. Like, I might say a couple words up there, but don't nobody know who I'm talking about, what I'm talking about. But I'm just letting it be known. Like, the person that, you feel me, they know. You mm-hmm. feel me? But I don't be, you know what I mean. But I don't yeah, really yeah. get hard on social media, but I'm right. trying to, man. Now, now I got you because, you know, social media is the uh they turn what you say to some other stuff. Yes, they, yes, they do. And they turn a lot of things into uh, negativity, which... It's a blessing and a curse at the same time. And I see what you be saying. You don't try to be on there as much. But, I mean, as far as your craft, it is a stepping stool. So, when you have... I don't know if you ever had any beef with anybody. I really don't want to know about it, <laughs> to be honest with you. But when it, when it came about it, and you know that you're trying to grow as an artist, what's one 
What's something that you have to mentally tell yourself so you want to put yourself in the wrong path? Um, shout out to Dope Well Kari. Kill him with success. Uh -huh. That's what I say. Kill him with success. You said what was it again? Kill him with success. Kill him with success? That's what make him sick. Mm -hmm. Kari said. Facts. Mm -hmm. But you feel me? I always thought like that though. But shout out to him, bro. He doing this shit too. Mm -hmm. Y'all go fuck with him. Mm -hmm. Nigga hard. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like how you did that, man, as far as shouting out to somebody else, because you know what I'm saying? Most of the time when it comes to interviews, certain people really don't shout out certain folks. They kind of hey, I it. want everybody to win, but I ain't no hating ass nigga, bro. You hard, you hard, bro. Facts. I go for anybody. Mm -hmm. bro, bro, this nigga be getting mad, bro. You know what I'm saying? A couple hours things to be hard. I ain't gonna lie, but I ain't no hater, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I'm just real, but at the end of the day, bro. Mm. Okay. Now, what is something that you got going on as far as going into mid-2023? Um, just putting out visuals, because mm -hmm. I got the songs, you know what I mean? Just putting out visuals, interviews, working, networking, um, doing shows, mm -hmm. brands. brands, oh yeah, um, I'm probably about to start doing this charity for, um, you, mm -hmm. you know, speak to them and stuff, we're gonna try to get into some schools, you know what I'm saying, giving them some mm -hmm. motivational speeches, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to make sure they're going in the right route, even if it don't touch them, like, you feel me, at least... We reached out, you feel me? We got them. Mm -hmm. We got their attention. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to. Somebody got to lead them. Mm -hmm. Everybody else leading them the wrong way. That's not how I'm trying to go about it because I know how I can end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I, I definitely respect that, too, because that was one of my questions I was going to ask. Because, you know, a lot of times um, children, they love music. And you know what I'm saying? When they hear music, you know, they gravitate, gravitate towards it. And, and that's um, the problem, too. Well, I'm going to let you go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's going to tie into it. Now, with that, and um, you have a child that listens to your music, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, they sing it or whatever, what is something that you try to be conscious of before you put that music out? Because you know everybody's going to listen to it. See, I try to be, like, I ain't going to lie to you. I don't make clean songs, though. Mm -hmm. my, pops told me, my pops told me that when I was um in middle school, mm -hmm. he told me he didn't want me cussing in my songs. So I feel like that's really what made me versatile because from middle school till I turned 18, mm -hmm. you know I was still making my dreams on the side, mm -hmm. but it just made me get more lyrical, you feel me? Because I couldn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I couldn't produce that type of image. All right. But that's not what he wanted for me. But you feel me at the same time, I would tell him, man, it's me. Mm -hmm. Can't be nobody else, feel me? All right. I got you. Now, as far as... You got somebody who's also listening to your music. They're not an adolescence, but it is somebody who kind of probably like your age, my age, or just in between. And it's like, hey, man, um, can you tell me what it takes to be able to be as a, as an artist? What were some words that you'd be able to give them to start them off? Um, be you, be different, be unique. Mm. Just stand, you got to stand out, man. You can't. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to mock somebody's flow just because you think it's hot. But, like, you got to, if you do, take it and put a spin on it. But, like, make people be like, oh, yeah, that's ain't hard. But he, you don't sound like them, bro. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of stuff sometimes and it sound the same. Like, you just got to stand out, man. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, yeah, and don't give up out. either, man. Because you never know. One hot song can get you on facts. So don't give up, bro. Just keep on going. Mm-hmm. Also, I do hear a lot of artists that say that, but just because you have one hot song does not mean yeah, it don't take your foot off the gas. It does not mean don't take your foot off the gas because you can be over here yeah. today. Yep, yeah, going tomorrow. Like Ice Spice. Oh, my God. I, I ain't going to say that. Uh, I ain't going to lie. Ice Spice freaks are killing me. Uh, Ice Spice. I don't like Ice Spice, man. I mean, like. How she talking about being a baddie, bro? And yeah. her baddie friend. That's it, bro. Uh, <laughs> that's it, bro. Oh. But she do got two. <laughs> Man. I was kind of weak off that joint she got with like that little Spongebob theme on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, like, like that's that was like, that was ass. Yeah, she ass. just dropped some new shit. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know where it's but going. But you got to realize, like, like, people want that. Like, people want that. That's the only reason why. Marketing. Marketing. You want that. Man, yeah, he told me you won't get So, look, what would you, uh, as far as the people, man, 
again, what do what do you want them to take away when it comes to listening to your music? I want them to um. If anything, I really want I want to make them feel better, but I don't want them to be listening to it like and they can relate to it. They not in their head like, yeah, I'm gonna get through this, bro. You feel me? Because mm-hmm. that's how I be like I will go through a verse talking about what I didn't been through. I'll show I'm talking about how I'm getting through it. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like I want them to know you can get through it, bro. I'm like, hard times don't last forever, bro. You know it. I mean, you could get through it, bro. Just keep your head up and listen to my songs, cause you'll be like, right. all right. So look, man, tell them and let them know where they can be able to follow and get all your music from, man, so they can stay on top of your music. And hey, y'all can follow me on Instagram at ace one k. That's two a c e number one letter k. And that's on every platform, everything. My music on all platforms. Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, Deezer, Tidal, Pandora. Feel me? I'm, on, I'm everywhere, bro. Just look me up. Mm-hmm. Fuck with me, bro. Tune in, bro. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> hey, man. Is there anybody I want to go ahead and give a shout-out to? This is open. I give a shout-out to two of them. You know, Marty Green. You feel me? Shout-out, Marty. Um. Yeah, definitely shout out. <laughs> hey, nah, shout out everybody. I want to shout out my family, family. Shout out my pops. He upstairs. He cool. You know what doing, bro. <laughs> shout out to him, bro. Because he the reason I'm getting so far where I am now, bro. He got me to where I am. Mm-hmm. So, shout out to him. All right, man. Shoot. Again, man, Ace, I appreciate this opportunity. I'm looking forward to the next appreciate it too, uh, interview, man. Um, We're going to be somewhere. And uh, I don't know, man. It's going to be crazy, man. So looking forward to the future and what you got going on. Hey, trust me. You're going to tap back in. You're going to be like, yeah, I'm telling you, I'm coming. By 2023, I'm coming for y'all, man. I'm at y'all next. Facts. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. That's what I was talking about. So look, man, I appreciate everybody for uh, viewing the video. We got another interview that's coming soon. So y'all stay put on it. Y'all already know what to go ahead and check out the Wave 804 on all social media platforms because y'all know what the Wave is. It's the Wave 804, and we out, man. I know the count with us. It's the Wave!